So this tutorial is going to deal with the ideal gas equation. Now, this is something that a lot of students get a little bit scared about, but you really, really shouldn't. It's all about looking at the different factors involved and getting your unit right. That's all it is, okay? So before we look at the equation, what we're going to do is look at what it is and a couple of key assumptions that are involved in this equation. So the ideal gas equation links pressure, volume, the number of moles of that gas, and of course the temperature that it's at, because the volume can be affected by the pressure. Okay, so the greater the pressure, the more volume the gas is gonna take up. Likewise, if you increase the temperature, molecules move around more quickly and increase the volume. But likewise, if you decrease the volume, the pressure is gonna increase when you compress something and so on and so forth. So all these four things are linked. So pressure, volume, moles, and temperature that all have these interrelationships between them. We need one thing to link them all together though, and that is our universal or molar gas constant. So if you see either of these two things, they basically mean the same thing. So this gas constant allows us to link all of these things together and show us how changes in pressure and volume and number of moles affect the temperature and of course vice versa. So all these five things are linked together. And before we look at the actual equation, there are a couple of assumptions that this ideal gas equation makes. So the key assumptions are that number one, no intermolecular forces exist between molecules of a gas. Well, we know this to not be true. There's hydrogen bonding, dipole forces, van der Waals or London forces. But what this ideal gas equation does is assumes that they don't exist, okay, for purposes of this equation. Secondly, that the volume occupied by the molecules themselves, the gas molecules themselves, is negligible, i.e. that these molecules are so small that they don't take up any volume themselves. Well, that's, of course, rubbish as well, isn't it? Because, of course, they exist. They're matter. They must take up some sort of volume. But the thing is, these different things... Basically, the effect they have on this equation is so small, we can, we can basically ignore them. That's why we're making these key assumptions here. Now, there are some other assumptions involved in this, but, you know, that's way above our pay grade at A-level, okay? But I've never seen a question asking you what these key assumptions are, but it is good to know um, why it's called the ideal gas equation, because gases don't behave ideally. We're assuming that they do for the purposes of this equation. Now, speaking of the equation, all important equation, PV equals NRT. So what we need to do is we need to look at each of these five things individually, which obviously stand for these five things we talked about up here, and talk about their units. Their units are all important when it comes to using this equation. So we'll start, of course, with pressure. So our pressure P must be measured in pascals or newtons per meter squared. Okay, now what this means is that these are very small units. They are equal to each other. So one pascal equals one newton meter squared. So if you see this, don't panic. It means exactly the same thing as a pascal. Now these, like I said, are very small units. So in terms of conversions, you must be able to convert them if you're given another type of unit. The most common conversion is from kilopascals. Now, of course, kilo means a thousand. So if you are given in kilopascals to turn that into pascals, what you must do is multiply by 1000. Okay, so if you're given kilopascals, which is very likely because these are so small, you need to make this a bigger number. So usually for pressure, you're going to be dealing with a massive number. Now, just as a little aside, just in case, you may be given pressure in atmospheres or bar. Now, these are less common, okay? But uh, if you are given those, guaranteed you will be given the means to be able to convert these into 
pascals okay so you will be told that you know one atmosphere equals however many pascals okay so if you do need to convert these you will be given the information if it's kilopascals you're expected to be able to do this okay multiply by a thousand to turn it into pascals volume is next on our list now our volume must be in meters cubed. Now, of course, when we're dealing with uh, solutions and concentrations and mole calcs, everything's in decimeters cubed. With gases, it's meters cubed for ideal gas conversion, okay? So our ideal gas equation. So the conversion is as follows. If you're given the volume in centimeters cubed, what you need to do is divide by a million. So in other words, times 10 to the minus six. So if you're given the volume in centimeters cubed, just put times 10 to the minus six after the number and it'll automatically convert it into meters cubed. There's the minus. If you're given the volume in decimeters cubed, what we need to do is multiply by 10 to the minus three. So what we need to do is divide by a million here or divide by a thousand here to convert it to meters cubed. Meters cubed, real simple conversion from centimeters, 10 to the minus six, decimeters, 10 to the minus three. Onto the other side of the equation here now, the N of course stands for the number of moles. There are of course no units here, all right? So if you're calculating number of moles, of course it's just number of moles, but of course if you're given it and you need to use it in the equation, of course there are no units there. Now onto this mystery gas constant. So R equals R gas constant. Now our uh, universal gas constant or molar gas constant has this value 8.314 joules per kelvin per mole. Okay now you do not have to remember this number it's either given in the question or on your data sheet but your units are important. Basically what this means is for every one mole of gas to increase its temperature by one kelvin you need this many joules, okay? So basically that's what that means. Don't worry too much about that. As I say, you'll be given this in the exam, okay? So as long as you can use this number. And last but not least, we've got temperature. Now temperature must be in Kelvin or K because this is what our universal gas constant is in. Kelvin here, okay? Basically zero degrees Celsius equals 273 Kelvin. Okay, so at zero degrees, that's the temperature in Kelvin. So basically, if you are given the temperature in degrees Celsius, what you need to do is take that temperature in degrees Celsius and add 273 to it to turn it into Kelvin. So even if it's negative numbers in uh, degrees Celsius, you add 273 and that will give you your temperature in Kelvin. So as I say, these units are all important, okay? You must get these right if you're gonna get the correct answer in your ideal gas equation. So we're headed for pascals in pressure, meters cubed in terms of volume, moles speak for themselves, gas constant doesn't change, but of course, Kelvin for temperature, all, all important. So how do we go about using this? Well, of course, in any exam question, we're gonna be given a number of these things and asked to calculate the other. So if we're looking for pressure, guaranteed we'll be given the volume, number of moles, R we've always got, and temperature, and vice versa. So you could be asked to calculate pressure, volume, moles, or temperature. Okay, so you could be asked to calculate any of those four things. Of course, this is always given, so you wouldn't be asked to calculate the molar gas constant. Rearrangements. If a question requires you to calculate pressure, pressure equals NRT over V. So I've taken the V and moved it underneath the NRT here. If you're asked to calculate volume, similarly, volume equals NRT over pressure, okay? So if you're asked to calculate one of those two things, those are your rearrangements there. Thirdly, if you're asked to calculate number of moles, so number of moles, what I've done is take the RT and move that underneath the PV over here. So number of moles equals PV over RT. And last but not least, of course, we don't need one for this because that's always 8.314. Temperature equals PV over NR, okay? So of course, in any of these cases, you will be given or access to in some form or other all the other four things that you need in order to complete this calculation, okay? 
Some people like to memorize these four things. If you're all right at rearranging this equation, you're happy to do that in the exam, that's fine. But if you're not very good at rearranging equations, these are very, very handy to remember, okay? So our ideal gas equation takes into account these four things which can all affect each other, all linked by our universal gas constant. Be aware of these key assumptions, but I wouldn't learn them off by heart, okay? But they're, of course, most importantly, you do need to remember this equation. You do need to remember that, okay? And of course, your units are king. So you need to know your units and how, you, how to convert them from the other things that you might be given in the exam question. And of course, we need to be able to rearrange it as well. So don't be scared of this ideal gas equation. In another tutorial, I'll go through a couple of questions on how to spot the type of question uh, where you'd be needing to use this equation, okay?